If the snowman is the greatest Christmas animated short, then Arthur Christmas is the greatest Christmas animated feature. Putting it against, um, Nightmare Before Christmas, um, Polar Express, uh, Christmas Carol, and, um, Rudolph. Really? That's it? And even then, I get people would get defensive over Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay, completely Christmas animated feature. Arthur Christmas isn't just in my top three Christmas movies of all time with Muppet Christmas Carol and Joe Noel. It was my favorite animated film of all 2011, which granted isn't saying a lot. And yet the Aardman critical darling didn't get an Academy nomination? Granted, that's only the second worst Academy decision for 2011. God, that year sucked. It also didn't do great at the box office, being overshadowed by the Muppets and but I kind of understand why. This movie was terribly advertised. I had no desire to see it until the reviews came in, but it'll get its return just by being a Christmas movie. And because it was underappreciated when it came out, the rest of its existence will be spent by having everyone who's seen it aggressively recommending it to anyone who will listen. Arthur Christmas is the story of a family dynasty of Santas, where Santa is a title rather than a person, currently being held by Arthur's father and expected to be handed down to Arthur's older brother, Steve. Arthur himself, is a kind-hearted, clumsy Christmas enthusiast who wants everyone's Christmas to be perfect and magical. At the end of a Christmas run, it is revealed that one child didn't get their present. Arthur immediately flips out, but when Steve waves it off as only one child out of billions, Arthur and his grandfather takes out the old sleigh to deliver the child her Christmas present. For Ardman's first CGI feature, it is astounding how good this film looks. Not just that the cityscapes and the character designs are all fantastic, it's those 1,000 and one details in the design of the Santa operation. All the technology, all the lingo, all the maneuvers to get around obstacles, the thousands of elves. There was a whole team whose only job was just to make all the computer screens. That early scene with the initial Christmas run to this day brings me to tears with how fast and brilliant it is. I love the naughty nice scan and the diverting milk and cookies to biofuel. Because when you get down to it, what separates this film from other films is just in how clever it is. The Santa operation, sure, but also how the story develops through the characters, because essentially this film has no villain. Sure there are obstacles, but the key conflicts arise because of its brilliantly flawed and fascinating family dynamic. Now on the surface, it seems like the easiest one to dislike is Steve. His words and mannerisms portray a strong military discipline and a corporate mindset to Christmas. He uses words like percentage and efficiency. He doesn't even refer to children by name, but by numbers. In any other Christmas movie, he would be the villain. And while his corporate, it's practically a 0% error margin mindset is the first story hurdle, like all of the other characters, we learn to sympathize with him. It is evident that he is very clever and skilled, as we see by that brilliant exit strategy when Santa is almost seen, but at the end of the Christmas run, Steve expects to be crowned the next Santa, as he basically runs the entire operation while his father merely does one ceremonial gift placement per city. But not only does his father keep the title for another year, while flaunting the authority of being the head honcho, he also systematically blames Steve whenever something goes wrong. This is another interesting layer of the character relationships in this movie, because a lot of the interaction between Steve and his father strongly reflects an employee being talked down to by his ignorant supervisor. How did you let it happen, Steve? How did that... I thought it was your mission. Oh, no. This is your department. And yet even his father's motivations are sympathetic, or at least understandable. He's portrayed as an old man who doesn't want to admit he's getting too tired or too overwhelmed by a job that he loves, and ultimately resists giving up the Santa title because he's not sure who he'll be without that identity. But this act does make his son Steve feel unappreciated and resentful, which is ultimately the reason why, when his father approaches him about the missing child, he instead draws attention to all the ways the night was actually successful. Of course. She's all that matters. Not me, your son, not the two billion things I did right tonight, no! Then there's Arthur's grandfather, a previous Santa who's resentful of the current use of fancy technology over the classic sleigh and reindeer, which of course puts him at odds with Steve, who has completely revamped how Christmas is done with smartphone technology and a high-tech camouflaging super sleigh. There is a very strong message here about tradition versus progression, which tends to be one of those hot-button topics about Christmas in general, and what's amazing is how this movie demonstrates the sides of this argument without demonizing either, showing instead the mistakes of 
relying on either alone. And in the middle of all this drama between the three family members, who ultimately mean well but keep being distracted by their own egos, there's Arthur, who just wants to deliver the present and doesn't care how it gets there as long as it gets there. Arthur is a character who very easily could have been portrayed as too naive or selfless to be believed as a relatable full character. And yet, even Arthur has depth. You can tell he does feel some anguish at being overshadowed by the rest of his family. Everything he's tried to do is either unappreciated or inconveniencing. You moved me after I tripped over that plug and melted down the elf barracks. In fact, it's likely that it's this internal frustration and desire to feel useful that fuels his empathy and his desire to make as many people as happy as possible. She'll think she's the one kid in the whole world that Santa doesn't care about. She'll feel so... left out. And it's not even as though his conviction is so pure that it never wavers. His chronic fear of everything almost keeps him from going through with delivering the present. But in showing how he pushes past those roadblocks for the sake of giving someone the perfect holiday, truly reveals how he embodies courage, empathy, and generosity on a level that you can't help but aspire to. He is one of the most likable protagonists in any movie. It helps that his clumsiness isn't too overplayed, and that his Christmas geekery stops at a sweater and a couple of novelty slippers. They didn't try to add a hat or glasses or anything. Thing. And even the slippers played a role in this story. And hey, thematic continuation from my last video, Arthur even has a crisis of faith arc synonymous with the traditional Is Santa Real subplot, only it works like 5,000 times better. We see from the start that even Arthur regards his own father as something beyond human, constantly gushing how Santa is the most generous, greatest man alive, but has to learn to deal when he learns that his father is indeed just a man with flaws. And it turns out he, like the other members of his family, has to shatter his perception of what Santa should be to understand what he really is to the children he delivers to. The way that this is handled says so much more about the true meaning of Santa and the nature of his real is so much more subtle and genuine than most other Christmas films, especially you. The film is all of this while having phenomenal voice work by celebrities that are actually voice acting instead of just playing themselves. All of their voices are unrecognizable. I mean, it's young Xavier, House, Hot Fuzz Chief, Umbridge, Christina from Ugly Betty, and the other Hot Fuzz Chief. And the film is still incredibly funny. Aside from the clever absurdism of the military elves, the bulk of the movie is just these bizarre situations Arthur and his grandfather get into when trying to find the right house, most of which are hilarious, but the alien subplot might have been one too many. I keep forgetting that part even exists. But the writing all around has such a wit to it, and because each character is able to display their own style of humor depending on their personality, it just makes the dialogue a joy to listen to. It was the 16th got it, 1802. Every child that year got a sausage nailed to a piece of bark. Are you okay? Polar bear, dear. Attacked me on the ice. Good job I did that online survival course, where it'll be one less for turkey next year. Surrounded by kids on new bikes, pointing, that's the girl that Santa hates! <laughs> she runs away, alcoholic by the age of nine, dead before she's even! Oh yeah, did I mention Bryony, the gift wrapping enthusiast? Because she is amazing! Without a doubt, the best animated female of 2011. And if you want to fight me on that, you have to find another animated female in 2011, with equal amounts of dialogue. This film just has so much going for it, from its visuals, to its complex character arcs, to just how fun it is. All leading up to one of the most heart-lifting endings that I have ever seen. I am just so hard pressed to think of many other characters or stories that embody the spirit of giving like this film does. Just that phrase, to make someone happy, speaks to every facet of the holidays. And I'm really glad that the song from the movie got repurposed, even if it's just for a Coke commercial. But if there's one thing Coke is really good at, it's great Christmas commercials, because God knows it isn't making an edible soda. So I really hope you guys enjoyed my Christmas special reviews. I'm sorry I didn't get to more, but let me know if you'd like me to continue with this next year. And now it's time to wrap up 2014, and you know what that means, wondering how long it'll be before I upload my worst to best list. Well, I guess we'll find out! Animaniacs, I hope you had a great holiday and have a fantastic new year. 